thanks very much for um, tuning in to find out about worms and compost creatures. So my name's Lisa Riley, I'm from Carryong Eco Garden and we've been volunteering there since 2005, uh, we're up to 15 years since we started at the garden. And I'd like to thank Central Coast Council for organising uh, the, all these workshops being streamed to you uh, because we missed out on the Live Well Festival and that was a real shame. It was a beautiful day yesterday but things are different at the moment. So these are all things that you can do at home, uh, really important things uh, to help the planet because food waste going to landfill is such a waste of resources and nutrients and um, creates a whole lot of problems in the environment. So these, these ways I'm gonna show you today, just a few tips to help you uh, turn your organic matter, your food scraps, into beautiful healthy soil that you can then grow food in, make yourselves healthy and goes round and round in a cycle. So it's, it's a really important process and I'm going to take you through a few things now. So I've got, I'm not sure if this is going to zoom in alright, if I hold up a photo, just tell me how to get this, the, um, the reflection off it. But this is a photo of the landfill site. So if you put your food scraps in the red bin and send them off to landfill, they're basically heading off to be with a whole lot of other pretty horrible stuff. Now no self-respecting worm or compost creature wants to live in a landfill site. So landfill is not a compost site, but things do very slowly break down. But because there's so little oxygen in there, that's actually called anaerobic decomposition and it creates methane gas which is not a good thing to add to our atmosphere. It speeds up the rate at which uh, the climate is warming. So if you're having a look, you all have these bins at home. We've got our red, yellow and green. Now, oh, there you go. So that's, um, they look different sizes in this picture because that actually shows the proportion of what we're putting into the bins. So 49% of what we're throwing away is food is going to landfill and about a quarter each of uh, garden waste and recycling. And if we look at what's going to landfill, this is the reason why we want to worm farm and compost and see that 39% of the, this one here, is actually organic matter. And some research shows up to 50% of what's going into landfill could be composted or um, broken down with worms. So that's why we are doing this. Okay, so when we're doing composting and worm farming, we're actually working with nature. Nature has already been recycling forever. It's part of the way the world works. If it didn't, uh, we would be surrounded by dead stuff, like dead dinosaurs, dead kangaroos, dead everything. But instead, nature breaks down everything that was ever alive, gets broken down, and turned back into beautiful soil. So this is just um, from my home, we've been just moving a wood pile and I found all sorts of um, things living in the bottom of that wood pile. And I thought it was a good example to see what sort of creatures are in there. And I can see little slaters, little, uh, little millipedes, and hopefully I can find, there's a beautiful big fat bush cockroach. <laughs> so um, they're a really lovely, in fact, some people have them as pets. I think I know, um, yes, a certain person who works for Clean Away has one as pets. Um, it was hiding in here, but it's a lo it was um, lovely because, so it's quite different to the cockroaches that we get upset about in our houses. They've got little segments on their body, uh, sort of all little ridges along the side and these, hiding very well in here. Oh, there it is, there it is, there it is. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, it's gonna be running away off my hand, but there is a beautiful recycle, nature's recycling bush cockroach. And it'll just burrow back down in there. It's just turning itself over. And that's what happened in nature. Everything gets broken down back into beautiful soil. So whether it's your wood pile or um, all your veggie scraps or your grass clippings, it all goes back and that's the way nature works. So what we're doing when we're worm farming and composting is basically helping uh, make that process in a place where we want to have it. 
So we, we create worm farms and compost bins and uh, places for all these creatures to live. And that's basically, you know, the whole purpose of it. You don't have to have um, all the fancy equipment. There are lots of different ways of making uh, compost spaces and worm spaces. So I've got a little picture here that I'll show you of some of the different kinds of compost bins and worm farms that I have used in the past or seen with friends having them. The very first worm farm I ever saw was my friend's mother, Lynn. She just had a whole lot of bricks around in a um, little shady part of her garden and an old doormat on top. And I've got one of these doormats just here. So just the sort of Koya doormat. And that was what she, the first time I saw one, Actually, the interesting thing I noticed that she used rubber gloves rather than gardening gloves, and I think that's actually a good idea with worm farms. They're often quite moist. So rubber gloves or gardening gloves are uh, good to protect your hands. So it was a very simple. She just peeled off the lid and there was like worms galore and food scraps. And I've done that sort of one in my garden as well. I think the next one I saw was um, lovely local man, Colin. And he just had a half plastic drum, like a big 40 gallon drum, cut down the centre. And he just had that again in a shady spot in his garden on a brick wall and he would use like a bit of a bit of an old fridge or something on top as a lid and had a drain there and the bucket collecting all the beautiful liquid. So um, and his wife was a, a really you know um, keen cook. She had lots and lots of food scraps and those worms were the best fed worms I've ever seen. I've never seen such a densely populated worm farm. This one was my very first worm farm after I saw the Centre for Alternative Technology in Wales had like poor man's worm farm made out of three tyres. Certainly something that are easy to find, but I've actually stopped using tyres at all because of the toxicity. So, um, but you know, it was, a, it was a simple method that I used for a long time. I just stacked three tyres on top of each other. Sometimes I got fancy and put little screws and wire and just held them stable, but they didn't really go anywhere and filled up the inside with scrunched up wet newspaper. So worms obviously will eat newspaper, uh, paper products, cardboard, because it's come from trees or from other plant fibres. So filling it up with uh, scrunched up wet paper, used up a lot, it's a great activity for kids. But again, I'm, I've gone off the tyres, but I'll leave that to your, your choice. Um, and that was a simple way. I mean, I've put the arrows here because if you have this kind of worm farm, obviously you can't collect the liquid, it's going straight into the soil. So it's a bit like the worm cafe or worm hotel. This is an example of one you can make like with a poly pipe um, or a you know, big chunky pipe and drill some holes in it, bury the bottom half in your garden bed and the worms can come in and go. You put your food scraps in there and then put something like an upside down pot on top to keep things, um, keep, yeah, keep other creatures out that want to eat your worms. Okay, my favourite one, I'm getting dirt all over this. My favourite one is the bathtub worm farm. So bathtub worm farms, I'm just gonna take this glove off. Okay, so we've had the wonderful um, peninsula men's shed down at the Etlong Baptist Church have made, I don't know, probably over the years, at least 20 bathtub worm farms. Uh, for schools and community places that wanted them. Um, this is a very uh, simple drawing, <laughs> but um, you need a very strong frame. This one doesn't look like it has much structure at all. A strong frame, because this gets very heavy, and you need to make it high enough to fit a bucket underneath. And the bathtub, um, they, we've got instructions on our website, the Carryong Eco Garden website, in the resources section. There's a little booklet you can download that has some tips on how to make a bathtub worm farm. There's some pictures of the men's shed, uh, lovely fellows making uh, one of the ones there for one of the schools. And there's it's suggestions on how to set it up. So in, in summary, I suppose I can tell you that you basically put some drainage material in the bottom. So that could be um, blue metal or it could be old holy bricks. Uh, anything that's gonna let the liquid come through and then we put a layer of shade cloth and then we put all the bedding in there. So the bedding, it could be any old stuff that's rotting down. Could be old coffee grinds, could be um, 
We've had coffee husks that we get from the resource queen of the Central Coast, Robin, and we'll also give you her details if you want to order worms from her. We get them from the, um, uh, for schools and things we often uh, order worms and bedding from Robin. So we put a whole lot of stuff in there. It could be the coconut fibre, you can get big blocks of that at the hardware shop. Uh, you can put, um, oh she puts all sorts of things. Robin will give us hair, old beeswax, um, <laughs> you name it, if it's organic, it can go in there for the worms to live in. And then you basically feed them on top. And the good thing the men's shed does is make a rodent proof mesh lid to go on this worm farm. And then of course there's little commercial type ones like the can of worms. And I do like to describe the different areas in there. It's the bathroom at the bottom, the living area, and the kitchen where you feed them up the top. Uh, again, you've got a, a tap and you collect the worm tea. Um, it's important, I do like to call it worm tea because worms don't actually wee. So that's, I would like to be accurate. Worms don't have eyes, worms don't wee. <laughs> worms have a lot of things in common with birds, unusually. Uh, because birds like eating worms. But if you think about worms and their anatomy, uh, worms, um, they don't have teeth like birds. And they have a gizzard and a crop like birds. And again, they also just have a solid um, waste material that comes out the other end, which is absolute gold. So a uh, worm, I always get um, students to say with me that worm poo is dirt. A worm poo is soil. I much prefer the word soil. Um, so I'm going to show you an example of, this is my, uh, actually been my son's worm farm. He's been living out of home for a few months and um, he's got the whole point of, you know, collect your food scraps in a pot in the kitchen and taking them down. Hasn't done a lot more than that. So it's looking a um, little bit neglected. So we're going to just give it a bit of TLC. Okay, so we have a look in here. This is <laughs> now this isn't going to be one of these fancy um, kitchen garden shows where everything looks clean and neat. Um, I've been told my presentation is very authentic. So um, this is a real worm farm as it was when I picked it up because he's moving house and yep, picked it up from there. So actually, I'm not going to use that tool. I'm going to use a good thing to remember when you're. Um, Using tools in the garden is that forks and prong type things like this are much more gentle for the worms. And I can see there used to be a, um, a hessian sack in here covering it all in. So that's all been eaten and all that's left is the, the poly, poly cotton um, string. And I can add that into my jar here of things worms don't eat. So things that worms don't eat include, if you put a cardboard box in, the sticky tape off the cardboard box, uh, the cottony stuff, which I've got here, I've got another bit out of my worm farm this yesterday. Uh, if you are peeling your potatoes and the peeler goes in, you'll find it there next time you look. Okay, obviously plastic cutlery, things like that. Worms don't eat plastic, don't eat metal, don't eat glass, but pretty much anything else. So sometimes I find cutlery in worm farms um, I don't know quite how that one happens. Uh, obviously pegs and wire ties. And uh, you, you might be thinking about um, other things you can put in a compost. So anything natural fibres. So if you've got an old t-shirt or an old um, pair of jeans, you can actually literally put that in a worm farm and it will get eaten. And all you get left is any synthetic material, like um, this is in my worm farm yesterday. This is the elastic. From the top of some Adidas pants, so there you go. <laughs> that's all that's left of an Adidas piece of clothing. Oh, look, you've even still got the string for the, but it must have been like old trackies or something that was pretty cottony. Uh, and of course, in the bottom here, we've got fruit stickers. One of the things I really would love to get rid of. Um, I know it's important for the farmers to brand their things. I'm just, I would love them to change them to paper stickers. And bread tags often get found in worm farms because they just end up in your fruit scrap bucket somehow. Okay, so they're the things they can't eat and pretty much, you know, everything else. Um, now, saying that, everybody gets very worked up about um, 
the old things that are on here. Okay, I'll just get this on the right angle. So this is a fantastic resource from Kelly Bollard. And um, down the bottom is all the things that people get uh, worried about. And I do say with worm farms to leave out uh, bread, meat, dairy products. And if you've got uh, citrus and onion and chilli things, only small quantities. It, it's not, they're not going to die you know, straight away. The whole point is it's about acidity. So um, what I suggest, if you have a lot of citrus, which we do in our house and in, um, and obviously doing onions and things, um, I just put that stuff more into a compost bin where the worms are free to come and go. So a compost bin is open to the ground and I'll have a look at that one in a minute. Um, but in a worm farm, you are really responsible for the lives of all these creatures. So um, there, there are worms and slaters in here, in James's one, and I'm gonna add a few more worms that I've brought from the Eco Garden worm farm. And I might put the gloves on here so I can do the while holding them. Now there's actually nothing dangerous about holding worms. It's actually more for their sake that um, if you've got um, children or yourself, you wanna handle worms, it's absolutely safe, but you're actually good if you wet your hands first. So I don't have a bucket of water here, but at the garden, when we have children looking in the worm farm, we just get everyone to wet their hands because worms have uh, damp, moist skin and it needs to stay that way. So, and the, actually the acid on our skin can hurt them. So the gloves are more for them than for me. So there's worms out of the Eco Garden Worm Farm. Got, I'm gonna add them in here. All wriggling around there. So you can see they're quite small. So compost worms are you know, one of thousands of species of worms. Um, there's about 300 different species of worms in Australia. And that three really commonly um, found in compost bins and worm farms and the common names that I use for them are just red worms, blue worms and tiger worms. So, and generally if they look really stripy, I call them a tiger worm. So, um, so I'm adding a few more worms to this worm farm, bit of TLC. Uh, you can see there's still food here. I mean, things like avocado seeds take a long time to go away. In fact, they'll actually start growing and then you can grow an avocado tree. Um, mango seeds do the same. Uh, some things, uh, yeah, here for a long time. Like you see the eggshells best if you crush them up. And you see the things that worms love the most. So the, the banana skins they love and they'll be all over that. They'll get all inside avocado. See, there's also paper towel in here because that will also break down. And there's a whole lot of other paper things that you could add uh, into a worm farm. So I've got a few examples here. I'm going to. I'm going to give him a, a new hessian cover and we'll also do a bit of food for it. You can also obviously put newspaper, egg cartons, paper towels and any of the paper stuff if you're wanting it to get eaten quite quickly it's best to tear it up and soak it in water and then it will get eaten a lot a lot quicker. Okay that leads me to talking about the food scraps if you have a lot of food scraps, like in our family, this is just two days of food scraps. And this little worm farm would not be enough for four of us to uh, put it. It'd be absolutely overwhelmed and you can certainly overfeed a worm farm. And that's when you'll get more of the smells and the flies and the, the problems. So I'll show you um, a little trick for helping the worms eating it quicker. And this is really important if you're at a school or a childcare centre is to chop the food scraps. So um, I'm just going to put them in here. I, I love this stainless steel bucket and I've got a chopping tool so it's just a paint scraper and I'm going to just put the food scraps into the bucket. Some of it doesn't need chopping at all because it's peelings but I've got some chunky bits of pumpkin but and you see I've got also oh in fact gone crazy with a bit of a yucky old onion there so I'll save that for my compost oh see the things that get in there there's a beer cap in my compost that's not meant to be there <laughs> so worms do not eat beer caps and um, generally every family needs you know a worm advocate or a compost advocate the person who helps make sure the right things go in the right places um, put those under there 
Okay, so the peeling sort of stuff can go straight in there. The other thing I like to do is not, um, not ever cover the whole top of the worm farm. So that if there is something a bit too sour, or a bit, you know, um, not so worm friendly that you've popped in there, then the worms have somewhere else to go. <laughs> okay, and this is a really popular activity, oh, I'm making a mess, with um, kids in schools. In fact, a lot of schools, uh, we use a big old school um, bin and a chopping spade. But this is just a neat little way. Pretty Beach Public School taught me this one. So they just use the paint scraper and a metal bucket. And we're just making it more, I mean the corn leaves aren't actually a good example, they're not gonna chop, but my celery stalk will, and my pumpkin will. My corn cobs won't, so. <laughs> but I'll just make things a little bit, a bit softer as well. So, because uh, the interesting thing with worms is that they are not actually, I mean, I said before, worms don't have teeth. So I'm just gonna put the little corn leaves in there. Um, worms don't have teeth, so they're actually eating the bacteria that is eating the food. So the bacteria has to be able to get into it first. And the more surface area your food has, the easier the bacteria can get in and start breaking it down. So, yeah made a little bit. This looks probably a lot easier to demonstrate in a school bin because you've got all those apples and apple cores and it really does turn into fruit salad. So, okay. And I would not put any more than that. In fact, I should follow my own advice and that is not cover more than one side. Give the worms still a space over here where they can do their own thing. Same in a bathtub worm farm. That's why I love bathtub things just feed up one end and eventually if you just keep feeding one end for a while then um, the worms will finish uh, eating all the stuff in the other side they'll be over here eating and you'll have like finished compost on one side of it that is the beautiful black humusy soil that is going to be ready to I just see a bread tag um, <laughs> that's going to be ready to go into uh, your garden you can add it into your soil there's a bit of plasticky stuff that the worms aren't going to eat. And that's probably a label off something, or yep, again, a bit, a bit of sticky tape off a box that's been in there before. So, but I can see that also there's little, you get just little tiny baby worms on that. So I'm not gonna, um, what I'd do at home is I'd just rinse that in a bit of water and make sure any little worms have come off it, but I'll just pop it in there for now. Cause I don't want to end up throwing away baby worms. Um, well, I'm mentioning baby worms. Uh, you know your worm farm's going well if you can see um, little lemon-shaped egg sacs. So worms actually lay egg sacs and they have five to 20 baby worms hatch out. And you know the worms are happy when you can see that they're breeding and um, uh, yeah, creating more worms. Um, people get worried about having too many. Worms are super clever. They will not overpopulate um, a confined space. Uh, but what you can do is then share, you know, if you see that you've you're got a really um, thriving worm farm, you can t take some out and share them with a friend uh, and help them start up a worm farm. Because worms can uh, lay egg sacs every week. Um, they're hermaphrodites, they can breed with any other uh, worm. There's not boy and girl worms, they're all hermaphrodites, so they're both. And um, they can breed up in the right conditions. They can breed up really quickly. So I'll just put the cover on there for my son, and that's ready. And that will all get eaten. And that just helps make it all nice and snug because there are little air holes in this worm farm that do let light in. The worms like to be in the dark. And I'll pop my worm farm in there, worm farm food sign, just a reminder. And I just check the other thing. So we've done the worm food, we've done the chopping. You know that you can put uh, lots of different things in. Um, you know that the soil is full of life. I've actually got a sign, I don't know if you can see over here under the, the screen, but aliveness, diversity, air and moisture. These are the um, little trick for remembering what compost needs. And there it is. Okay, so aliveness, diversity, air and moisture are the basic things to remember with uh, composting and worm farming. So they're living systems 
they're full of life. In fact, if I got a, just a handful of healthy soil from a garden or from a compost, in one handful, in fact, some people say in one teaspoon, there are more microorganisms than there are humans on Earth. So more than 7 billion microorganisms living in just a small amount of soil. So there's a whole world that we can't see, but it's actually super important for a healthy planet and for healthy uh, soil and for them growing healthy food, which we all need to live. Okay, so the aliveness diversity. We've seen a whole lot of different veggies in my food scraps, but there's so many other things that you can add to compost. So I've got examples here, sawdust, obviously untreated, uh, coffee grinds, and you can often get a bag from your coffee shop like this one here. Uh, what have we got there? Ah, oh, this is a bit of a mystery one. It's one of Robin's secret ingredients, carbon granules. Still don't know where she gets those, but I think it's something like a, you know, a cooking takeaway shop or something. Coconut fibre, and this is the stuff that you can get in, a, um, uh, in blocks from the hardware shop. Ash. Uh, from a fire or something like that. Now ash is a good thing to add if you do have citrus, a lot of citrus and, and acidic stuff in your compost, adding ash is the perfect um, sort of alkalinizer. So you're putting acidic stuff in, the ash will um, raise the pH, make it more um, alkaline. Um, there are products you can use as well that are, you know, like dolomite um, or fancy versions. This is basically, I'd say, dolomite in a bottle. Um, you can get it in a cheap, you know, unlabeled bag, bag from a, like a produce shop. Uh, very well crushed eggshells. This is one of Robin has a whole process for doing that. And I've taken the things out of there. So I think that's a little summary of all the different things that can go in there. And then air, if I come around here, the air, if you've got a compost bin, is that all right that I'm here? Yep. Okay, so I highly recommend not just having one worm farm or one compost bin. I think it's great to have both. So this compost bin uh, is the kind that you can get from a, com a council workshop. So look out for those in the Green Living Workshops on the council website. If you go to one of their workshops, uh, you can get a, a choice of a worm farm or a compost bin for your family. And um, this, pulling it off. Okay, this is totally empty, so it's all pretend. But uh, imagining I've got a whole lot of different things in here. Again, think of diversity. I could be putting shredded paper, um, weeds, leaves, uh, the food scraps, um, egg cartons, um, old leaf mulch, en endless amounts of things. I've got a beautiful book here, the compost book. It has a whole list of all the, there we go. <laughs> okay. So the compost book has got all sorts of things that can go in and tells you what nutrients they add to the soil. It's basically what, what you put in to your compost is what you get out. And when you have a whole lot of different things in there, you might like to do a lasagna style is what they call if you layer your green rich stuff and your brown drier stuff or your carbony stuff. So it's a, a balance of carbon and nitrogen and a lot more carbon than nitrogen. So. It, sometimes I go to schools and lift up the lid and oh, the flies come out and it's just food. And that's just not diverse enough and you need carbon in there. So I get schools then to, um, who often have uh, mulch piles of woody mulch that um, local tree loppers have um, given the school or um, that they've got there. It's the perfect combination. So I say put for every bucket of food scraps that goes in, put three buckets of the carbon uh, carbony mulch stuff or the shredded uh, newspaper and then you want to be able to um, turn it because air is so important for all those living things in the compost. So this is a beautiful tool that was invented by uh, a man called Dion Kentwell up in uh, Newcastle. Oh, where's the best way to show that tool? And it's beauty. <laughs> okay, so it's, it's like a corkscrew. Uh, it's now being called the compost key and it's being made in Sydney because Dion has sadly passed away and he's passed the business on to um, uh, Peter Rutherford down in Sydney who's eco-gardener, um, patron of our Carry On Eco Garden and he's at Kimbricky. So this tool, uh, it, they say unlocks, they're calling the compost key, unlocks the, the uh, value in your compost I suppose and helps uh, loosen everything. So it's it's kind of replaced the old fork, turn and toss sort of thing. So you just put it into your, your mix 
and you hold it here and here and you screw down. It goes down, down, down and then you lift and shake. And it's just really nice to use. <laughs> I've had friends who say, I can't stop using it. It's so much fun. So, and we do have yeah, children also just all wanting to take turns uh, using this uh, in school. So it's great, you go all around the compost bin and if you go down too far and get stuck because it's all you know, caught up or you've got long weeds, you can just reverse out again. So it's a beautiful way to aerate it. Even if you go down and just shake it, you are helping aerate your compost. And the other really super important thing is that you add moisture. So if you're putting dry things into the compost bin, um, which you will if you're putting you know, dry leaves or shredded paper or old pizza boxes, then you must add water. So pretending here, because I'm in a studio, not the garden, but um, you pour the water in, make sure everything gets nice and moist, not, not uh, soggy or it will smell. It, um, you need it just moist. You want to be able to grab a handful of the compost and squeeze it and get a couple of drips out of it. So that, that's the, they're the main things to remember. Same you, worm farm, if you've got it somewhere um, where it doesn't get any rain, then you need to make sure it stays moist enough too. So both things, they're living systems, look after them. And please, if you're ever going to stop worrying, you know, looking after your worm farm, give them to somebody before they die. Don't just stop feeding them. Um, I see a lot of uh, sad um, end of life sort of worm farms and I just think, yeah, at least, you know, tip them in a shady part of your garden. Uh, don't just leave them in there to, um, you know, starve and, and die. Look after them. They're beautiful and they'll, they'll give back to you as you look after them. So, um, whoops, put my compost bin lid back on. Trying to think, I wish we had the live questions because that would help me. Um, know the next things people want to know. Uh, so watering cans for water, you can also use a spray bottle if you want to just lightly wet your compost bin. Um, I've got the mask here because I shouldn't uh, not mention that um, it's really important just to be aware if you have um, allergies or sensitivity to dust and things that if the compost is dry that's another it's actually makes it you know there's a, a risk of um, things that you're going to breathe in. So Wearing a mask is optional, mostly, but if you have any concerns, certainly just grab a mask to protect you from the sort of stuff that's in. Same as you have the warning on um, potting mix, uh, if it hasn't been um, yeah, wet, wetted down, then you have to be, you know, be careful, be sensible. Okay, um, I think I'm near the end. I've got compost creatures poster over here. Can I say anything about that? Uh, I think I've already referred to all the different kinds of things that are in compost. Uh, the billions of microbes in just a handful of soil, but also slaters and earwigs and um, all sorts of things from the, even the bush cockroaches, um, the birds, the, uh, if you see little jumping things, um, uh, they're called springtails, it's a good name for something that jumps. And the most amazing things, if you've got uh, children who want to get really close up looking at the soil and you might you know, use magnifiers there's some tiny little creatures here called pseudoscorpions and I, I had never seen them until I started doing a school program with um, uh, compost and using magnifiers and little equipment like this so little boxes to put things the creatures in to have a good look at with a magnifier or use a traditional little magnifying glass or a little lens and lots of ways to have a look and you might be amazed at the tiny things that you can see like pseudoscorpions that are you can see the little pincers the tiny little red things so the soil is alive it's very um, important and i hope you can enjoy uh, enriching it by composting and worm farming and i always know you can visit your local community gardens when um, when that's allowed and uh, come and see us ask us questions um, and yeah, be encouraged to keep um, composting and giving back to the earth.